I'm speaking with David Passig. David Passig is a futurist who specializes in technological, social, and educational futures, as well as the future of conflict. He's an associate professor at Bar Ilan University in Israel, where he heads the graduate program in information and communication technology and the virtual reality laboratory at the School of Education. He's written two books that were bestsellers in Israel. They are the Future Code, and 2048. He's a frequent lecturer and consultant and recently spoke at the Ashman Family JCC in Palo Alto. He has a PhD in anticipatory anthropology from the University of Minnesota. David, when you say you're a futurist, does that mean that you're trying to predict the future? We're trying to study the future, which is very different than predicting the future. Studying the future means that we are trying to figure out the trends, not in order to know what's going to happen in the future, but in order to better understand what is the right thing to do at the present. And these are, these are very different, uh, different perspectives. Well, what are the main driving forces? What are the things you see as having the greatest influence on the future? Well, there are a few that are crucial for humanity in the 21st century. One of them, of course, is, the, is energy. Uh, energy is the blood of civilization. And we are running into deep troubles into the 21st century in terms of uh, uh, new resources and, 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 and new amounts of resources to, uh, to, to be able to, uh, to provide 10 billion people with, with energy they are really consuming in a way that we, we couldn't even imagine a few decades ago. Is it that we don't have enough energy or it's too expensive to extract it or there are too many political problems, the people we want to buy it from don't like us? Or what's, what's the issue well, you here? Su you summarized everything. <laughs> but one of the main issues is that in order to provide for 10 billion people and by 2050, uh, the amount of energy that you and me are consuming, the same level of uh, uh, consumption, we need uh, to extract huge amounts and, and, and provide to so many people that don't have it at this moment uh, that energy. And it, it's, it doesn't seem that we have enough. It doesn't seem that we have enough uh, political will, etc., etc. So uh, this is the major driving force that is going also to drive some conflicts by the mid-21st uh, century. Do you foresee technological developments which maybe will develop new sources of energy that are a lot cheaper? Well, of course, but the problem with those technologies is that is, is that it takes uh, decades, you know, to implement those technologies, and it seems at this point that oh, there, maybe there's only one resource that can really uh, be balanced and not uh, bring a lot of uh, uh, of uh, difficulties to many uh, nations, which is uh, what we call space-based solar panels. The problem is that there is no great political will to go and invest in those kind of technologies. Well, if we get to a crisis point where our whole industrial setup is liable to collapse unless we get new energy, wouldn't that provide the political will? Well, most of the time the political will comes with uh, or because of conflicts, world conflicts. And then uh, societies are really willing to take a lot of deficits to do things that it was, it was imaginable just a few years ago. So that's why I'm very interested into the conflicts of the 21st century, because when you understand those conflicts, you understand what type of technologies might develop. You understand what types of, of changes these societies will be, uh, will be doing because of that stress of conflicts. Now, when we talk about the future of society, is that even a valid question? That assumes that society is one thing. If we ask, is the future going to be good for society? Well, Maybe it will be good for some societies and not so good for other societies. Can we differentiate which societies are likely to be the future winners and which are likely to be the future losers? Yes, well, uh, you know, again, if you analyze with a very uh, reliable methodology, and this is the most important thing that we futurists bring to the table, we are not thinkers. We are not analysts. We are developing methodologies with which we, we try to understand the logic how systems are evolving and with that uh, uh, with that logic we are trying to figure out 
the next stage of a system. Now, as far as I understand, again, with, with the me some methodologies I, I'm using, it is clear that the 21st century still belongs to the U.S., to the Western cultures. Now, some people are saying it's not. Some people are saying it, it belongs to the East again. I'm not part of those people. And I have, I need, you know, uh, <laughs> many uh, hours to explain the methodologies with which I'm coming to that conclusion. At least the 21st century, a lot of, uh, of the uh, factors that brought Western cultures to be so successful are still uh, 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 playing out. And, and, and the 21st century is going to show that Western cultures with their technologies, with their values, are going still to dominate human history. What about population growth? The human population appears to be growing at an exponential rate. That obviously is not sustainable over the long term. What do you think is going to happen? Well, you see, this is another issue which is a, a, a very good example to show how futurists are thinking and other people are thinking. You know, many people lately have learned that humanity have reached 7 billion people. And most of the, uh, uh, the public uh, venues and, and, and publications were concentrating on the next 40 years by 2050 and speaking about between 9 to 10 billion people. And they did not teach uh, the, uh, the people that <laughs> time does not stop at 2050. <laughs> there is still another 50 years or at least, at least another century that we can estimate at this point how many people would be there. So at this point of time, people think, wow, th this growth is, con is going to continue and we're going to see tremendous impact of that growth. But as far as we understand at this point of time in history, by 2050, humanity is going to, sta to start shrinking. And by, 20, uh, by the end of the 21st century, if by 2050 will be about 10 billion people, by the end of the 21st century will be around 5 to 6 billion people again. Is that because the birth rate will decline or natural disasters and wars and infectious disease will kill lots of people? It's because there are 10 reasons. The main reasons are human-based reasons, which is mostly there are at this point of time already in, 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 uh, in human populations, we have for every 100 uh, uh, females, there are about 117 males. Is that true yeah. worldwide? Worldwide. This is the worldwide picture. Different, there are different nations with different uh, uh, figures. For example, China, they have 20% more males than females. This is for just one example. Another example is that, of course, fertility rate. The fertility rate all over the world is dropping so fast. You know, we, we were used in the 20th century that we, a lot of nations used to have four, five, six, seven kids for each female. Nowadays, most of the nations are barely doing the replacement rate, which, which is 2.1 kids for each female. Is there any understanding of why fertility rates would drop? Is it because women don't want children or there's something happening which they don't understand, which just makes it harder for them to get pregnant or bear children? We, we are aware of some reasons. I don't think we really understand the whole picture. The, the first and most important thing, of course, is the education of females, which, which brings them to, to, to have only a few, few kids. Now, as a futurist, do you recommend that we do any specific things to try to produce a better future? Of course, that's exactly the point of futures thinking. We are trying to figure out what's best uh, to do at the present. You know, And one of the most important things is what we call uh, help the poor get out from that state of mind. It's not just state of economy it's a state of mind and the effect of helping the poor is tremendously so beneficial to societies now people think you know just give them some technologies that's not enough it's a state of mind that needs to be taken care of and that research is trying to figure out exactly how to do it 
Well, right now we see uh, very often people who claim to represent the poor tell them that they're victims and all their problems are somebody else's fault. So I gather that that's not the approach that you're taking. You're talking about uh, teaching people to be self-reliant, that their destiny is in their hands primarily? Exactly. And, and that's what makes really an, a great impact on so many other things that they are resolved uh, almost uh, you know, immediately, if only that mindset is changing. Now, we know that societies about 200 years ago were built somehow, uh, there were about a, a very few percentages of, of societies that were on the top. Most of the uh, people in societies were at the very bottom. That's why somebody uh, in France uh, called that that time uh, or those people the miserable. The, most of us were really very miserable. Okay, the revolution of the last two hundred years is to change that mixture. Do you think there's a possible future in which all of mankind is basically united, or there'll always be opposing camps and in, in different groups that are hostile? Well, I believe there will be some time, but it's, you know, millennials ahead. It's not, it's not something in the next century or a couple centuries. Humanity is still very primitive, and we have really to, 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 uh, to make sure that we always remember this Homo sapiens sapiens is 10,000 years only. This is nothing. We are just, we barely started our uh, our time in, 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 in history, we are very primitive and it will take ma many, many, many more uh, years to really uh, clarify who we are, what we can do, what our possibilities were. Well, based on your studies and considering that technology has gotten to the point where means of mass destruction are in the hands of many people, are you basically optimistic about the future of humanity or are you pessimistic? I'm very optimistic. I believe in, in the imminent logic within the system. Otherwise, you know, you can't do anything <laughs> nowadays. I believe that we will do a lot of, of mistakes, as we did forever, okay? But those mistakes are not mistakes that are going to erase humanity from, from Earth. Those mistakes might bring a lot of difficulties, a lot of hard hardships and, and hard times. But overall speaking, humanity has a driving force to, uh, to bring it in its intelligence to, uh, to be effective, to, br to balance a lot of powers and a lot of, a lot of drives from primitive drives to uh, very sophisticated drives. And overall, humanity is just at its very beginning journey in time.